An old Chinese saying goes: Buy gold in troubled times and collect antiques in good times. For many Chinese, right now is a time to buy gold, not to collect antiques. Because the Chinese economy continues to weaken, the stock market is depressed, the Chinese currency depreciates, and bank interest rates are too low, a gold buying frenzy has emerged in mainland China. However, many Chinese don't realize that the economic bubble is bursting. Along with it, popular gold companies are going bust. Several gold stores in Beijing and Shandong province have closed and gone on the run, leaving customers unable to redeem their gold. The accumulated losses exceed 400 million yuan, or about 55 million. In this episode, let's explore the story of the Chinese people, their government, and gold. Let's start with a look at the new dynamic of China's Generation Z. Generation Z refers to the demographic of those born between the mid to late 1990s and the early 2010s. This Chinese generation is currently staking their financial security on gold beans. But experts warn they are at risk if they can't tell the difference between real gold and fakes. Gold beans are usually gold weighing around one gram and are commonly sold for between 400 and 600 yuan, or between 55 and 83 dollars. As reported by Chinese media in 2022, young people nowadays like to save up for gold beans. Saving one gold bean a month has become the financial goal of many young people. They consider the process of saving gold beans as a regular investment, eliminating the risk of gold price fluctuations through long-term and stable investments. Compared to investment in gold bars that can easily be 10, 50, or 100 grams, this kind of gold that's as light as one gram has a low starting point and doesn't cost much. Young people find it easy to get into, and it gives them the hope that one day they might be able to afford to buy gold bullion. I would spend what I would normally spend on a little piece of clothing, a meal, etc. So I think it's a good idea to save up for gold beans and make this kind of financial investment. What I'm saving now costs about 500 yuan or 70 dollars a piece. Like this one, the heart-shaped gold beans are also relatively more attractive compared to ordinary gold beans. It is rather unique. I save one for my girlfriend every month. I now have a total of four. The epidemic has increased young Chinese people's sense of urgency in managing their finances. It has changed their outlook on wealth, prompting them to start paying attention to financial planning, making them more rational in spending and more money savvy. In addition, the internet and short videos have also influenced young people's view of fiscal management profoundly. Many netizens have taken photos or videos of the small grams of gold they have bought and shared them. Some people have already filled up glass bottles with gold beans. There are often comments in the comments section saying, "Saving money isn't as good as saving gold beans, and buying mutual funds isn't as good as buying gold beans." In October 2023, the China Gold Association statistics showed that in the first half of 2023, the national gold consumption was 554.88 tons, an increase of 16.37 percent compared with the same period in 2022, of which gold jewelry increased by nearly 15 percent year on year. According to the National Bureau of Statistics of China, gold and silver jewelry was the fastest-growing category in the retail merchandise category in the first half of 2023. And among those buying gold, young people are apparently more enthusiastic than ever. The China Gold Jewelry Industry Insight Report 2022 shows that the proportion of young people acquiring gold has grown from 16% to 59% over the past five years. Chinese media reported that in 2023, the top-selling store on China's e-commerce platform had monthly sales of 90,000 units of gold beans. The sales volume of these small gold beans is still on the rise because soon there will be the Mid Autumn Festival and the National Day. Now it's up 30 to 40 percent month over month. Businesses saw this trend as well and have taken advantage of it to launch a variety of products. 
The current sales or volume of gold beans has doubled one to two times compared to previous years. At present, we can sell about two kilograms of gold beans. We have also launched a new gold piggy bank, which stores gold beans, and the weight of the gold piggy is three, five, or seven grams, and the largest is one hundred grams. Two hundred grams can be customized as well. And this trend continues to the present day. According to the China Jewelry Consumption Trend Report 2023, Generation Z consumers who have been hit by high youth unemployment and the country's descent into deflation are now one of China's biggest consumers of gold jewelry. Chinese media reported that the spokesman for another leading Chinese jeweler said purchasing gold beans for gifts and investment peaked during the Chinese New Year. Even banks joined traditional gold retailers and started selling gold beans. For many young Chinese, saving a gold bean on a regular basis has become their financial goal. In their minds, it's like investing money on a regular basis. It's a long-term investment. However, the Chinese media, in a recent Bloomberg report, have quoted experts cautioning that the consumers of gold beans and other gold products are at risk if they can't tell the difference between real gold and fakes. Bloomberg reported that Lily Chen, a 26-year-old Shanghai office worker, found that almost all of her gold beans were contaminated with iron, zinc, and copper when she recently attempted to trade them for a gold bracelet. The reason for this is that gold beans may be simpler in craftsmanship, so its labor cost is also lower. A lot of businesses will make use of the gold beans to mix in some other metal elements. It'll affect its purity, so we'll have to check for impurities in this recycling process. The Bloomberg report quoted experts as saying that it makes little sense to invest in gold beans or other gold items because their prices are usually 10% to 30% higher than the spot price of the commodity. Putting money into gold exchange-traded funds would serve investors better. It's certainly disappointing when gold beans are laden with impurities, but it would be shocking if the store where the gold nuggets were entrusted upon suddenly disappeared. In China, if you ask an average Chinese person where the safest place to buy gold is, they're likely to tell you China Gold. And this is because China Gold isn't an ordinary company. It has four listed companies. More importantly, it is a government agency formerly known as the National Gold Administration of China. But it's precisely such an organization that has made many Chinese who buy gold feel desperate and hopeless. Consumers reported that the China Gold Concept Store, located in Chaoyang District, Beijing, has closed down, and the gold that was previously hassle-free reserved at the store can no longer be taken out. Victims said that as of January 2024, the victims' rights group had done a count. What they found was that when there were 40 people in the group, the amount of gold that couldn't be withdrawn was about 60 kilograms. Many people entrusted their gold here because the business promised that for every 400 grams of gold, 10 grams of interest on the deposit would be returned in a year. According to Chinese media reports, a group of nearly 50 consumers estimated that the amount of gold in escrow may exceed 50 million yuan. In March 2024, Miss Zhang, one of the victims, wanted to renew her gold escrow contract. But when chatting with the store's staff on WeChat, Miss Zhang was told that our company has closed down. You should go to the police station to report the case. We are a franchise. We didn't run off. We are just bankrupt. Many people justified their gold purchases from China Gold because it's an enterprise owned by the central government. But China Gold said that the headquarters doesn't allow the franchise to carry out gold escrow business. It's willing to call the police to assist in the investigation and communicate with the franchise side of the compensation, but it isn't going to bear the compensation. What makes consumers more scared is that the entity behind these stores in Beijing is Beijing Sanding Yuan Gold and Jewelry Company. According to Tianyan Cha, a large data technology service company with a vast collection of Chinese enterprise information, Sanding Yuan was founded in December 2010 with a registered capital of 3 million yuan. There is no connection with China Gold regarding equity relationship. It is just a private enterprise joining China Gold. 
China Gold's 2022 annual report shows that it has a total of 3,642 stores, of which 105 are directly operated, and the remaining 3,537 are franchise stores, accounting for about 97.12%. According to the 21st Century Business Herald, the former head of Sanding Yuan has been arrested. The news report questioned that just because of the phrase franchise is used, China Gold is then released from liability? China Gold is a central government enterprise, the largest state organization managing gold in China. To the Chinese people, the government shouldn't cheat people, right? However, it never occurred to them that China Gold, through such manipulation, would get away with paying no compensation at all. Surely, Chinese people are outraged. Online comments read, China Gold must be held accountable. When purchasing gold, people bought from China Gold because they trusted it as a state-owned enterprise with credibility and a national brand. One individual wrote, I just told my child, don't buy China Gold's gold jewelry because it isn't reliable. Now my words have been confirmed. Chinese media reported that not only China Gold, but also consumers of Shandong Gold have encountered the same problem. The Shandong Gold franchise case involves more stores and a larger amount of money. Shandong Gold is a key state-owned enterprise in Shandong province. One victim, Miss Chang, revealed to the Chinese media that all six Shandong Gold stores in Beijing were closed. The original Shandong Gold stores have now been replaced with China Gold storefronts or other brands. Ms. Cheng herself purchased investment gold bars in October 2021 at Shandong Gold store in Beijing. The bars weighed 630 grams, equivalent to more than 220,000 yuan or more than 30,000, and the signing of the escrow period was one year. She said, at that time, the salesman said that it wasn't safe to put so many gold bars at home, so put them there for a year and then come to take them out. If the gold price rises, they will give them to us at the price that has risen. But who would have guessed that when I went to pick them up in 2022, the store was closed, and the money couldn't be withdrawn. Among the victims known to Ms. Chung, up to 10 million yuan worth of investments haven't been retrieved. And according to her, one of the police stations in Beijing currently has investigative statistics of as much as 400 million yuan involved in the case. Based on the gold bullion contract provided by Ms. Chong, it can be said that the recipient is Beijing Zhejin Jewelry Company. The company is the largest domestic agent for Shandong Gold. In Beijing, a number of Shandong Gold counters in three luxury business districts are under the company's umbrella. At present, Zhejin Jewelry is in a variety of abnormal states, such as abnormal operation, being executed by court, restriction of high consumption, and equity freeze. Chinese media called Shandong Gold and discovered what the staff said was surprisingly like China Gold. The staff said, The store in Beijing, Guayou Plaza, is a franchise. Shandong Gold doesn't allow franchises to carry out this kind of gold escrow business and there is currently no such business in the directly managed stores. What's more, the staff said, The local authority has opened a case on this matter. Our brand is a victim too, and we have been negatively impacted. A white-collar worker from mainland China, Ms. Li, disclosed to overseas Chinese media that after the recent increase in the price of gold, there are more and more gold store bosses running away and more people selling fake gold. In recent years, two kinds of gold stores have been shut down. One is the proprietary operator and the other is the franchising. The ones that closed down before were basically proprietary businesses, but now most are franchised. She believes that the risk that gold store owners would run off is underestimated by consumers. She said, People now know that financial products are risky, so they dare not buy them. They have foresight. The elderly in particular would rather deposit their money in the bank for capital preservation. But when it comes to gold, people don't really understand the risk. That is, the gold can be taken and disappear. So, when the gold belonging to the Chinese people was taken away by the operator of the franchise under the name of the state enterprise, will the CCP government step in to regulate or recover it? We think it's almost impossible. Why? It's because the CCP regime doesn't want gold to be stashed away among the people. Since ancient times, Chinese people have cherished gold jewelry and products, but in reality, the amount of gold held by folks is very low. 
China's central bank now has about 2,000 tons of gold reserves, ranking sixth in the world. The gold in mainland China is basically controlled by the government, with relatively little gold in the hands of the private sector. Before 1949, the Chinese people had large amounts of gold and silver deposits. When the CCP took over in 1949, it seized all the private gold. Each person couldn't own more than two tails of gold, and the rest had to be sold to the CCP at a low price of 70% of the market value. It was coercive, practically a great robbery by the CCP. At that time, it was a felony for someone to keep gold in private possession. Gold was considered a strategic supply, and once discovered, not only was the gold confiscated, but all other family assets would be confiscated as well, and a felony conviction was also imposed. Gold is a franchise monopoly in present-day China. Gold is basically mined by the government, except for small-scale gold mines. There are specialized police forces to supervise the operation. They used to be called the Armed Police Gold Force. As such, gold in the private sector is very small in China, while other countries have a lot of gold in the private sector. For example, India's central bank holds more than 600 tons of gold, but the civil gold in India may be as much as 15,000 tons, a very different ratio from China. On the one hand, the craze of Chinese people buying gold has to do with the domestic economic depression, and on the other hand, many people also see the international trend. Globally, the price of gold is rising. 2022 was a record year for gold purchases by central banks around the world, with a total of 1,082 tons of gold purchased. In 2023, was only 45 tons less than 2022. So the trend of gold purchases by various countries has remained strong. If the dollar system is in trouble, the only financial tool left in the world that can be used as a hedge and is also the safest is likely to be gold. The total amount of gold mined by mankind so far is about 200,000 tons, most of which was mined after the 1950s. What does 200,000 tons of gold mean? The specific gravity of gold is 19.32. That is, one cubic meter is 19.32 tons. 200,000 tons is roughly 10,000 cubic meters. In other words, a soccer field with a thickness of one meter high can be loaded with all the gold in the world. It's worth 13 trillion based on the current gold price. Currency is a measure of value. It represents wealth, and if there is no actual wealth value behind a currency, it'll be devalued. In the past two years, countries around the world have been engaged in quantitative easing. The U.S. national debt alone is more than 30 trillion, and the M2 currency is almost 21 trillion. China is worse, with 290 trillion yuan, equivalent to 40 trillion U.S. dollars. Plus, countries around the world are overissuing money, so they have formed an atmosphere in which currency depreciation is expected to occur. This is the fundamental reason for the rise in the price of gold. Of course, there is also geopolitical turmoil, all in line with the Chinese concept of buying gold in troubled times. However, financial planning is way more than just doing math. In China, there are many traps to avoid if one wishes to preserve or grow one's wealth by buying gold. The probability of falling into traps is high if one still trusts the CCP that's running the country.